R.I.P. Oh, I think he's amazing. Thanks, that guys. It is epic. It is perfect. It's gorgeous. It's poignant. It's all exhilarating. It's it's not that dead. Poignant. Very exhilarating. These are big words I can't pronounce. How the hell did none of our words make it into this I'm promo? Like, yeah, I'm looking at the Aren't names. Aren't we important yeah, to the sure makers? We're the New York Post. Oh, it looked like his arm was ashy. It was like, whoa. That's that what I was about to say. MD, MD, I was genuinely <laughs> about to say the same thing. <laughs> I was literally about to say the same thing. And then I was like, no. I have no comment on the level of ash on any skin in any movie ever. <laughs> it's true. I mean, like, uh, what's it called? Shuri did dry him out earlier in the film. She just dry him out. So that's just and real ash. Wet. Sure. He was wet and he went He's straight brittle. to dry. He is straight right. up. Mm -hmm. The ash flakes off of his arms. Our man is flaking off. That's, He's that's flaking. A, hey, that's a big reason why Shuri was able to beat him is because he was dehydrated. Always, exactly. always hydrate before you fight. Exactly. Gatorade. Oh. This is a Gatorade commercial. <laughs> Welcome back to New Rockstars. Marvel Studios has released its final film in Phase 4, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, an undeniably powerful film, but is it the best movie of Marvel Phase 4? Where does it fall in the ranking of the seven films of this, I think we could say, slightly uneven era of Marvel? Well, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Gobble, 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 gobble. gobble. You've stepped away from arguing with your family about politics and other bullshit, so come join us at the nerd table to argue with us about how Jessica is crazy for ranking Eternals as number I one. I am tired of you saying this. Wakanda the What's wrong with you, boss? You keep saying this. We were gonna. Why would you spoil her list name. like this, Eric? It's like, not what are you my doing? list. <laughs> Yo. Right before we start recording, right after, Jessica just pulls us all aside and says, "Let me tell you about how perfect the turtles is." Right? She keeps uh, showing me her Druig Makari fan fiction. Like enough. All right. Okay, yeah, that is um, true. I, I read but... volumes one to six. They were great, but volume seven. <laughs> Thank you. Yourself. I'm bringing it to the brown screen instead of the silver screen. It's the brown. <laughs> the screen. brown screen? What is I that? A, I was thinking of a butthole, but it didn't sound right. I am offended. That's Thank disgusting. <laughs> oh, oh, offended. I thought you said a fan of. <laughs> no, <from that. laughs> a fan of. I'm a fan of the brown screen. Let me tell you. Nom nom nom. Delicious chocolate. Never mind. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go, here we go, here we go. Ooh. This is Inside Marvel, New Rockstar's weekly Marvel reaction show. In this episode, there are seven theatrical films of Marvel Phase 4. There's Black Widow, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, Eternals, Spider-Man No Way Home, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Thor Love and Thunder, and Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And the three of us will each rank them from worst to best in our um, probably wrong opinions, according to all of you. <laughs> but that's the fun of this. Is we're all gonna we're all gonna fight it's over this. Good. It's gonna be fun, and we all love each Please other. Please be nice. All, I love, love you love... guys. Please yes. be nice. Or don't come for me. Can we make a or pact not you. to um, not to raise our voices at each other? There's just too much anger in the world right now. Twitter is a hellscape, and let's not turn this. Episode of Vincent Marvel on Twitter. Oh no, I'm going to. Just I'm going to be making so no angry. promises. <laughs> just as like f your promises. <laughs> I got the knives out. I don't care. Mm, depends on what stupid shit you guys say. I love this. I love how we're starting off this way. This is awesome. I'm Eric Voss. With me today is Jessica Clemens and MT. Jess, MT. Before we begin. I want to ask you, how was your phase four compared to the other phases? Is it fair to say this is the worst phase? I would not say it's the worst phase. I would say that, like, considering how this is the start of a new saga, like, this is just like the phase one of a new story. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the, the Infinity Saga's mm -hmm. done. Now we're in the Multiverse Saga. So, like, now we're being introduced to all these new characters. And like, you know, that was a big reason why the, the Disney Plus shows existed. I think that this was a really fun phase. It was different. It was, we got a lot of new things, which is what a lot of people were complaining about for with the MCU for a while. It's like, we're getting the same stuff. Like, eh, man, we got a lot of new stuff. And I feel like that newness is what a lot of people thought they wanted, but they didn't really want. They wanted the same old stuff, but like the MCU was evolving. So I don't know. I thought it was a great phase. Mm -hmm. I thought it was, it was different. It wasn't like as hype as phase three, but like it was, it was pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, Jess? I think yeah. I think phase three is still my favorite, but it's hard to mm. beat phase three. Mm. And I think it's phase it's, three it's, had a lot, it's a lot of great it was so fun. It was so fun. I did love how phase four is about mourning and grieving completely. Right. <laughs> like it's everyone keeps dying in phase four, and you know how I love people dying. So I really <laughs> like it. But it's hard, you can't, it's it's hard to compare the phases because genuinely it's like, yeah, I like the beginning when it came out, but now that technology has changed and graphics have gotten better and money has gotten bigger, 
I don't like the first phase as much as I like any of the others. Does that make sense? Really? Yeah. You know, I think that's that's interesting. Uh, you both make very interesting points. And I agree with, uh, especially with what you said, MT, about it, it being kind of like a phase one all over again. It's like phase 1.1. 1. 1. Right. And, uh, I, you know, I think the brightest spots might have been on the Disney Plus shows, to yes. be honest with yes. you. I, I think, 100%. Uh, I think not all the Disney Plus shows were better, but I think the best things, the best titles that came out, I think, uh, WandaVision and Loki might have been better than all of the movies yes. of Phase 100%. 4, in my opinion. I, I agree. I, I definitely I feel like the Disney Plus ex shows allowed us to have a better experience than a movie would. Because, like, in a movie, we're just in a movie theater within, like, in two hours with, like, a bunch of people. But, like, these shows allowed us to all bond with the world on Twitter. R.I.P. I don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, but, um... And just like, you know, share the WandaVision mystery, share like the Loki mystery, share the mm -hmm. WandaVision grief and like experience that all together. So I, I definitely feel like the Disney Plus shows allowed us to experience the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe a lot more, especially also with like getting more time to be with these characters. Yeah, by having, like, yeah in more a more hours. communal way. I right. definitely like it felt like I uh, those shows brought me together in ways that the movies didn't always uh, connect me with everyone. I thought that was really fun. Right. But let's dive into it, okay? We're gonna rank the seven MCU phase four films. We're very, very nervous, especially, I think there's gonna be much more disagreement uh, across the three of us compared mm -hmm. to the, the Disney Plus shows. But a reminder of the titles that we're looking at today, Black Widow, Shang-Chi, Eternals, No Way Home, Multiverse of Madness, Love and Thunder, and Wakanda Forever. We're not including the Disney Plus titles here, neither the series nor the specials like Werewolf by Night or the Guardians Holiday Special. We're just going to look at the seven big theatrical releases that Marvel Studios spent hundreds of millions of dollars on. And uh, as we said when we ranked the Marvel Phase 4 Disney Plus series, please know that we are coming at these movies generally from a place of love. Don't come at us. Twitter's scary right now. And we understand <laughs> that your ranking's gonna be different from ours. We're gonna do our best to explain why we rank it, but understand that when, this is like a snapshot of our feelings, uh, realistically, I can't speak for, you know, uh, Jess and MT, but speaking just for myself, my opinion, my ranking is probably gonna change next week if you were to ask me next week. It's true. Uh, because all these movies have such a personal connection with each of yeah. us and uh, what we love about them evolves over time. You'll, you'll see it in mine completely. It's a personal connection. If you were like Jessica based it <laughs> off of MCU knowledge and what gave you more information, I could change it. I could change it immediately and it would not look anything like I scored it. But I scored it based off what I can watch over and over and over again, what I have watched over and over again, and what characters really spoke to me. Let's start with our number sevens. Who wants to go first? Number seven at the very bottom is Black Widow. <laughs> Jessica because says Black Widow. I wanted so much more. Understandable. And I will always be mad about it. My number seven was Thor Love and Thunder. I'm, I'm very leaving. sorry. Okay. I'm walking away from right uh, okay. Get my microphone. And then, Take my damn mic. And then Take I, my damn I mic. I agree with Jess. My number seven was Black Widow. But continue, Jess. Why, why Black no, Widow? No, I want to hear him tease. Stupid. I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I want to. I need to hear this. How Black Widow is not your number seven. Sorry, it's only my. We have the same disagreement about Black Widow. Mt. That's why it's it should true. be our number seven. <laughs> no. I thought like, we knew I, each other. <laughs> no, no. Black, black. I can definitely see why Black Widow is at the very bottom for you because it was wasn't like the villain wasn't very compelling. That yeah. whole movie just felt like. A lot of missed opportunities, like like you said the, uh, the other day with Taskmaster, um, missed opportunity there, and also a missed opportunity to tell the story of um, the the country. Why am I blanking on the country? It starts with a B. Budapest. Budapest, right? Um, yeah. Budapest. They just glossed over the story. They like they kept alluding to this huge event that happened in Budapest. And nothing happened. So, like, I was so let down on that because, like, I just wanted to see that. Uh, but MT, you weren't so disappointed to rank it at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, so right now, you can make it a case for why you should have ranked it at the bottom. I would. I want to know. Uh, <laughs> first off, Jess, are those your reasons? Do you co-sign off of MT's reasons? I wanted to like it so much. I wanted to like it so much. Black Widow is also like a character that I don't really pay attention to much in the uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I was like, oh, she's getting her movie. Give her a platform to win me over. And it did not win me over. It made me like her less. And so I was like, it made me love Florence Pugh. It made me love Yelena. 
and let me love uh, her dad. But then even then I was like, I'm not really getting like a serious moment even from them. I'm getting just comedy. So right. I just wanted mm -hmm. a little bit more. I agree with everything both of you said. And I think realistically, the biggest missed opportunity in this movie was to tell us more about Natasha Romanoff, yes. a character who was mm -hmm. killed off yes. in Endgame. We didn't get to see a funeral. The whole promise of this movie is what you said, MT. We get to finally find out what Budapest was all about. I love finding out more about Drakov's daughter. I thought that was an interesting tie-in, but like, we didn't learn anything more about Natasha yes. Romanoff in this movie. Uh, and, and that's a real missed opportunity. Um, we never really learned what happened between her and Clint. I feel like we grieved more for Natasha Romanoff in the Hawkeye series than we yes. did in the Black Widow yes. movie. And that's right. really weird. That said, Florence Pugh, David Harbour, Rachel Weisz, yeah. all great, great actors. I can't wait, wait to see them more in the MCU. Um, I think the chase scenes in Budapest were well choreographed. I love the Americans style opening sequence. But everything with the Red Room, the other Widows, uh, and Taskmaster just really fell apart uh, for me in this movie. Yep. Yeah. It, it wasn't really all that interesting. But, like, the, the reason why it's not my bottom list is because of yeah, Elena cool. and Red Guardian. Uh, because I do okay. love those characters a lot. And, like, I'm very look, much looking forward to seeing them in the Thunderbolts and, like, you know, just moving forward. I just feel like that movie should okay. have been a Yelena movie. Honestly, let's if be it real. Was, fair enough. Movie. Probably would have liked it. <laughs> but MT, Love and Thunder, explain your choice. <sighs> my biggest gripe with Love and Thunder is, I mean, beyond like, it, it wasn't really the visual presentation, as a lot of people have noted, is, is uh, very much different from previous Marvel Studios films. Um, but like the biggest problem for me was uh, their, how they treated Gore the God Butcher. Because in the comics... Gore the God Butcher is a serious, like, huge threat. And, like, he butchered a lot of gods. And in Thor, the, in Thor Love and Thunder, we didn't really see a lot of butchering. We didn't see any. We, we really only saw butchering at the beginning of the movie, really. And then um, he just stole a bunch of kids and then, uh, you know, played B Gore the babysitter for the entire mm -hmm. film. Which was a huge, mm -hmm. huge, like, I was very much let down because you got Christian Bale. Christian Bale is such a great actor and you didn't That's not use Thor him. Love and Thunder's fault. That's not Thor I, Love and Thunder's I, fault. That's Marvel's I don't, fault. I, I they they merge characters like that MT. all the time. Okay, keep going. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't. They, I shouldn't they do, but me. like, I just feel like if you're going to nerf Gore the God Butcher, then don't use him. Like, just use yeah. another character. Agreed. Like, yeah. it, like Agreed. this is like a huge, like, this is like a Thanos level character for in the Marvel yes. comics, yeah. I feel. Like, a massive threat with the, um, with the Necro Sword. So I just feel like if you're going to do a huge villain like that, you got to commit and you got to just go balls to the yeah. wall. So like, that's my biggest gripe. And like, you know, I'm not, I, I, I've, I've said it previously on Inside Marvel that I'm not the hugest fan of, um, of Natalie Portman as Jane Foster. I think she's a great actress. I think that she's a great person, but I, I, it just, I wasn't the biggest fan of, of that um, in general, but like, I do like her, her, that she got that send off and, um, that she is now a Marvel great hero with her own statue. But anyway, yeah, that's why. The end. Yeah. Okay. I can agree. Uh, I with think that. that's a fair choice. I think mm -hmm. I think MT, a lot of people probably agree with you. Um, and I I applaud you for uh for sticking to your guns there. Let's move on to our number six picks. I'll go first. Okay. Um we'll we'll each say what our picks are and then we'll explain. Uh, my number six pick is Eternals. Damn, I thought we'd be different. My number six is also Eternals. Oh. Okay, Jess and I are on the same wavelength so far. So far. So far. You see, my number six was uh, Black Widow. That's where I hopped on the Black Widow. Black trend. Widow, okay. So it was not too far away. My quick uh, two cents on Eternals. I, I, I just think for me, this had some of the highest highs in phase four, but also a lot of the lowest lows, a lot of the lowest lows. I think the whole story of the Celestials was thrilling, beautifully designed. I, I love the mythology of the Celestials. Endlessly fascinated by the idea of like celestial seeds uh, world forges the idea of using uh eternals as synthetic caretakers i just think this cast was far too large it has too many weak links i'm not going to single anyone out in particular but like at least three to four of the actors in the eternals were not cast well in this movie uh and i don't think they're at their best i think the deviants are mostly unnecessary to the story there is a potentially great movie here mm -hmm. like imagine a greek drama about ageless gods feuding about how to intervene with these foolish mortals and whether to overthrow their own creators the celestials i just think that's really hard to pull off in a two-hour movie i think this idea would have worked better as a mini series um i think this story needed to leave earth like get the hell out of that murky ugly ship interior i thought that setting was terrible and they spent like the second half of that movie in that awful ship uh and then uh maybe fight the celestials in space maybe see 
other planets or alternate Earths in the multiverse get destroyed. I don't know. I just think there was like a more fascinating movie in here. And I think the actors trying to pull off this Greek drama debate, yeah. they were confused or bored with that concept. And like you could see that on their faces and yeah. uh, the movie didn't deliver. I agree. I, I definitely agree that like um, the, the whole ship interior, I feel like there's a whole, like a, a lot of missed opportunity with the Domo ship. I feel like it's a really interesting celestial, like, how is that thing even powered? Like, I, I would love to have seen the inner workings of this ship rather than being in this one room with a bunch of shit around because Makari was reading a bunch of books and collecting a bunch of stuff. But you didn't choose it as your six. Well, no, because like, I, I really enjoy Eternals as a, um, for God. what it does, means to the MCU and like how, and what it explains about evolution energy and like the impact of the sun in the MCU and like how the Eternals get their powers and like what it means for X the X-Men um, moving forward. And so that is in like- well, We didn't get anything about the X-Men in that movie. They didn't say mutant anywhere in the movie. Like they had so many opportunities to establish uh, apocalypse with like the mutant origin mutant dna and they didn't they didn't pull the trigger on any of that i i feel but like those be. seeds are being lame because mm. like if you look at eternals as a movie it starts off on a beach and then ends on a beach and like it's because of like i believe it's telling the story about evolution and about um you know how the eternals have been around since the beginning there's a lot of symbolic stuff like to, to, to long story short and like, yeah. I've been, I just really enjoy it. I have the same opinion with Age of Ultron. A lot of people don't like Age of Ultron, I but I really Age enjoy that because like the, of the symbolic meaning of like Ultron and like how he's so biblical and like what, and that God stuff that he talks about. People didn't like Age of Ultron? A lot of people, a lot of people. Wait, what, on. really? Uh -huh. I, okay, so it just means Yeah, a lot of people Age rank of Age of Ultron as like the worst Avengers movie. It's, it's got uh, definitely a mixed bag. But Jess, what are your thoughts on Eternals? You joke and say that I love this movie. <laughs> But I did love the comics. <laughs> I did love the comics, and uh -huh. my and out of all of Marvel movies, I think this is one of the movies that I really wanted to stray along more with the comics because it would explain a lot of stuff. And the Deviants was my number one, and I don't like what they did to the Deviants. And I wanted to explore the Deviants more. And now that they're mm. just basically loose animals that just run amok, they're not really anything. And I like the Deviants being able to learn and become things without having to eat each other that wasn't in the, <laughs> the comics. <laughs> so I just, I wanted more from that. But then when you said the acting stuff, it did, it, it's so interesting because it's like they, you you couldn't really go down the, um, the number of cast really because they're all very important in the comics, but it's also like you guys didn't make it come off that way. It seems like from the right. movie, we didn't really even need Sprite. Um, I, I, right. I didn't like that triangle love story i was like i don't care about this there's bigger things happening right now <laughs> also i feel like if you're going to have like essentially like these justice league like type of characters like these super powerful characters you have to give us like a a super epic like super yeah. epic action sequences and we didn't really get that with eternals like that's one of my biggest Girl. gripes it's like you have a superman with icarus you have like a, a speedster like a flash with makari we should be having like um, you know, your, I mean, your Zack Snyder level action sequences, not to, sure. you know, bring up, I'm not the hugest Zack Snyder, uh, guy, but like he, he would have really went in if he had the Eternals, honestly, because like he knows how to do a good action sequence. I think he would have done a good job and fun job with Eternals. I think, it, yeah, I would have been interested just based off of Zack Snyder's like, uh, origin of the, the dark side battle on earth. I think that made a better Eternals movie than mm -hmm. the Marvel Eternals movie. Nothing against Chloe Zhao. I think Chloe Zhao is an amazing, uh, she's an amazing, I just think she writer. was not the right pick for this movie. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. All right, so MT, you ranked Black Widow number six. You talked about Black Widow earlier. Is there anything more you want to add about Black Widow? The whole Taskmaster thing, and obviously there's there's room for, for growth and evolution with that character, but mm -hmm. I just really um, was let down that, like, they, you know, they, they advertise this huge Taskmaster matchup, and, like, you know, it's like, oh, my God, we have Taskmaster in the movie, and then did nothing with it. And uh, the whole Dracoff mm -hmm. thing, I just don't like Dracoff as a human being. So I'm just like, it just really just creeps me out. Oh, so he was that good of a character. I'm just like, Ugh. yeah, it's just really disgusting. Anyway, yeah, like, it's, we all talk about punched, it. It's low. When he punched Scarlett Johansson, it really irked me. I remember seeing yeah. that scene and visually it, it being felt, like, mm, like being mm, mad. Disgusting. Disgusting. Um, shall we move on to our number five picks? Yeah. Yes. MT, what's your number five? My number five was Eternals. 
My number five is uh, Thor, Love, and Thunder. My okay, number five okay. is also Thor, Love, and Thunder. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Jess, you've been looking at my notes again. <laughs> no. But you know, this is just going to make it even more painful when we diverge. Real quick with Thor, Love, and Thunder, I agree with uh, many of the things MT brought up, specifically the character Christian Bale. I think if you bring in a character named Gore the God Butcher, you need to see him butcher more than one god. Right. And that did not happen in this movie, and I think that was a big mistake. I think the look of this movie with all the VFX and the volume set work, which is especially distracting. The reason I rank it higher, I think, than UMT is I just really still love what is left in this movie. I think Christian Bale's performance that he gives is, is fascinating to watch. Um, Jess knows we saw the premiere together. I didn't tear up at the end, but it's really just because I want to be a daddy so badly. And that's just, that speaks for me. Maybe not everyone who watches this movie. And I really just love Thor teaming up with the Guardians to kill those wacky Mad Max bird aliens in Act 1. And to me, that is sublime MCU Thor joy. And I'm really, I just had a great time in the opening act of this movie. I love the idea of visiting Eternity and how cool they yeah, made Eternity so look cool. and how Eternity transforms into love. I just, it was that rocked. I just think like, what the hell happened with this movie? Like, why did so much of it get cut? Like, I need to know what happened behind the scenes with like the notes Taika was given. It seems like Taika did not fight for this movie the way he fought for Thor Ragnarok. Well, he um, only worked on a little thought, bit of um, Thor Ragnarok, right? It was someone else. I always forget that he didn't write it. He just directed Thor Ragnarok. That's true. That's true. They had different. They had Eric Pearson and Stephanie Folsom writing the scripts of that. Yeah. Ultimately, I think there's very little this movie has stuck with me. I think the whole kid battle, all the kids of the power. Yeah. Before, I thought that was really, that was really, really that really took me out. I was like, all right, so this is for the, the, the kid audience, which is like, you know, I'm sure kids really appreciated that moment. And like, you know, I'm not a kid, so I can't really talk for them. But like, I'm it just kid. felt really like it, tacked yeah. on and. But it makes me wonder who this movie is for then. Like, is Taika making this movie for kids or is he making it for adults who want to see Chris Hemsworth's ass? Because it's like, <laughs> it seems like he's making his movies for like college age and up and not for kids. Uh, he's making movies with irreverent kids in it that adults can giggle at. But I think that like trope has just gotten really, I'm really bored with that trope of just like kids saying bad things, kids doing it, kids with the mind of Taika Waititi inside of their kid body. It's kind of like, all right, like I... I Maybe I'm just tired of seeing kids in movies. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I don't want a child. <laughs> I, don't. Tired of seeing kids. I do want a kid. You I just don't want them to circle. be a movie star with a, an adult writing words for them. It's just okay. weird. Yeah, you're right. Children should write for children. I realize what I'm saying is completely crazy. I just think like there's, it's hard. Uh, I can relate with teenage and up. I can relate with kids who are in high school. It's hard for me to relate with kids in middle school and down. Just because you're not a full person yet. You're just mostly flesh and, and raw emotion and you don't you can't have a complex thought so it's like okay you're to me it can only serve so much uh, of a role for anybody to empathize with i want to be a daddy so badly we lost all of our middle, middle school viewers <laughs> they're like oh voss hates Just babies kidding. i put thor love and thunder as my five and i think i've said this before i don't know how I have no idea how, but Thor movies have become my favorite out of the Captain mm -hmm. America's, uh, Iron Man's, anything. It's become Thor. And I what think do you mean you don't know how? I... It's Chris Hemsworth. We know your, your secrets. Oh. <laughs> 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 I, think, I think, well, I think it's because ultimately we're still like, especially me and Voss, we're still like comedy people. Like we're still comedians. Mm -hmm. We did UCB improv and sketch and stuff. And I love the mm -hmm. comedy aspect that they bring. And I, I, there's a lot of funny right. things, yes, but I think Thor is the essence of comedy. Oh, Chris Hemsworth is so good at comedy. Yeah, it's just, that's what he is. He is the he is the laugh. He is the bit. So I always love that. And it's always stuck with me. And I love it because it keeps us always laughing. And it, I think it sp spoke to me as like a, yeah, funny people can be sad at times. But I do see the quarrels. And it took me way after yeah. the premiere to notice what the quarrels were. And then I was like, no, I understand. Yeah, they did go really bad. Uh, <laughs> they did go really bad. Yeah. The child ending part didn't get me like everybody else. It was more so the farewell to Jane Foster that got me. And I and there's no cancer storylines in the MCU until that. So it was like, I like it. All right, MT, you have Eternals at your number five. You've, uh, you've definitely talked about, is there anything more you want to add about Eternals? Oh, uh, no, I just, you know, I didn't put it as low because like of, again, mm -hmm. like the significance to what do I believe is like, what's going to happen with the X-Men with the Eternals and like, you know, you know, I just love this, like Chloe Zhao's writing um, with the Eternals personally, because like it just, you can tell that she really cared about telling a really unique story 
um, that was closely tied to actual like mythology and, and trying to keep it um, accurate, but like with a Marvel Studios spin. So like, I don't know, it, it's, it's a great yeah. movie, but it, it's definitely flawed. And the next Eternals movie better be more action packed. Kevin Feige, please. All right. The end. Hey, you know, what's interesting is the three of us all agree that the same movies are in the bottom three. We just have slightly different orders between Jessica true. and me and, and with right. MT. But we all kind of agree that there is a lower tier of Phase 4 films. We're now at our number 4 pick. We're right in the middle of the pack. And here's where some interesting sparks are going to fly. My number 4 pick is... Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Ooh. Oh, that's not mine. Mine is Multiverse of Madness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> mine is... Spider-Man No Way Home. <laughs> oh, first oh, hot take. take. Oh, controversy. Wow, Jess, Jess. No, okay, no. I'm going to just get my explanation out of the way because I think, Jess, you have, no, you have no, some explaining don't to do here. Do Big time explaining. I'll go first, though. Um, okay, so Shang-Chi, Legend of the Ten Rings. I really, really did like this movie. I don't want people to get the wrong idea. I think this had the best stunts of Phase 4, hands down. I love the character of Win Wu. I love Bill Pope's cinematography all the wuxia dance fighting with Wu and Ying Li. Uh, I just think uh, Shang-Chi and Katie were great in their own right. They were just in kind of a different movie. They were more in a completely different... People will, like say, oh, I love the stunts in this movie. And I'm like, well, what do you mean specifically about the stunts? And they're like, well, I love how it's like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, but it's also like Jackie Chan. And I'm like, yeah, those are completely different tones. I think this movie mostly dovetails them Right? Because Shang-Chi is in like a Jackie Chan slapstick movie. Everything with a bus, with a bamboo scaffolding, that's all Jackie Chan, his stunt team. But then everything with Wen Wu is like a different mythological wuxia style, a uh, natural uh, style, which both are beautiful, both are amazing. I just think Shang-Chi loses a bit of that dynamism that he had in the first act when he gets transported to Ta Lo and with the Ten Rings compound. Uh, I think the final battle with the Soul Suckers, the Dweller in Darkness, falls a bit flat. We never really get an understanding of what Shang-Chi is fighting exactly in that moment. I think that monster is far more interesting when it's pretending to be other voices in people's heads. I was riveted by that. I want to know why it does that, how it does that. And we never really answer those questions. Uh, and ultimately, I think what it comes down to for me is this movie is called Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. And we don't learn shit about the Ten Rings. We learn about their history, uh, the Ten Rings organization, Win Wu's history. But the rings themselves, the movie is telling the legend of the Ten Rings. And in the opening 10 minutes of, uh, of uh, Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring, we learn everything about what the Ring of Power is and the other uh, Elven Rings, the Dwarven Rings, the, the Man Rings. The fact that this movie does not tell us anything about the, the what the rings actually are and just punts that, even in the post credit <gasps> scene, it's like, then don't call the movie and the legend of the Ten Rings. Boy. For me, 10 out of 10 first half of Shang-Chi, 5 out of 10 second half. And I got, maybe if we got I can't a fighting wait. tournament in the second half. I can't wait until uh, we get to my shang for me. I'm gonna I still really off. liked it. I just wish we had gotten more of different things in this movie. Okay, okay, okay. I'll take that. MT, do you want to go into why you ranked Multiverse of Madness at number four? Multiverse of Madness was a really great time. I really enjoyed going through the multiverse. And um, I really, of course, enjoyed meeting the Illuminati and like getting the Illuminati confirmed in the MCU. And of course, seeing um, Mr. Jim Halpert as Reed Richards in uh like as everybody wanted i think he i thought he did a great job and i really like how we they subvert, subverted expectations by killing the illuminati um off like immediately mm -hmm. um i just thought that you know multiverse of madness could have done more with the multiverse aspect and of course this is a doctor strange movie we're like we don't want to go too balls to the wall with the multiverse i like how like they they continued that story of multi of doctor strange being um a a doctor who um is trying to be like this super perfect person but at what cost like he's trying to solve mm -hmm. problems but like at the cost of like his soul and by using darkness and at the cost of a universe so like i i really like that but i just feel like we could have gotten more with the whole multiverse aspect and like wanda and like i really wish that they explained why um wanda went crazy with the dark hold because like i feel like a lot of people were upset that like, oh no, she's completely different than WandaVision. But it does make sense why she's different from WandaVision because she had the Darkhold. But I really wish there was like a scene that's just like, all right, everybody, the Darkhold messed her up. That's why, that was the significance of the final scene of WandaVision. Like she is, she's no longer okay. Like her, her mind is mm -hmm. not okay. So that's why she's doing all these bad things. But they didn't have that. So like people were just like, why is Wanda so different? What's going on? And um, yeah, so I really, I feel like just for clarity's sake, 
they should have had something like that in there. But anyway, it's number four. Not not bad. It's it's fine. Fair enough, MT. And I, I think those are a lot of valid criticisms and uh, valid points in general. I have some thoughts on that that I'll get to when when I uh, mention my ranking for Multiverse of Madness. But I think, Jess, we all got to know. We got to know. The thing is, I, I'm clearly sorry because I now know that I'm, I'm clearly well, I, I'm known, sorry. I've, I've known no, no, I'm fine. wrong it's about okay. Spider-Man No Way Home. You're not wrong. It's your opinion. It's fine. Okay, sometimes opinions are wrong. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, it's, it's, it's your, uh, it's your like, own no, list, so there's no right or I, wrong. It's fine. This is, I mean, if you talk to Gen Z kids, opinions can be wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I'm saying this. My, this is why I said at the beginning. I said it's based off of what I can watch over and over again. What I really liked. What got me with characters. Um, but if we did versus like inform information that we need in the MCU and on a scale of MCU, I would have put No Way Home much higher. But I think out of my top four, No Way Home is the only movie where in the movie I said, I'm, I'm tired. I literally was wow. like, there was there was so much dialogue and some dialogue that wasn't needed. And then I was just like, OK, I get this. I'm in it. But then I also was like, OK, I'm very happy to see Tobey Maguire. Oh, my God. I love Tobey Maguire. And if you're a fan of his weird gang, you even love Tobey Maguire even more because of this movie. <laughs> and then I love Andrew Garfield. And I loved all these callbacks. I loved it just to get sucked away and never come back. And then on top of that, the acknowledgement of Miles hurt me. The, the, a black kid in Brooklyn. <laughs> that's it. That's all we got. We're expanding the multiverse. We're diving into the multiverse, but they can't touch Spider-Man. And I know a lot of this stuff is based off contracts and based off this and that. But I was like, okay, out of every black person in the Spider-Man universe, I want to see Miles Morales, not a Jamie Foxx's Electro. <laughs> so, I, was, I genuinely was like, I was like, okay, I get it. I, I cried. I got emotional at it. I thought it was great. But I was also like, just for just in my opinion, watching it wise, I have watched it at one time and I was fine. I have not watched it again. Okay. okay. All right. Um, interesting thoughts. You know, I'm looking at our list right now. I think uh, MT, your list might be the most aligned with where fans are at. I think oh. in terms of like the disappointment versus pleasant surprise oh. meter, like I think a lot of fans are really disappointed by Love and Thunder. Um, but I think looking at what's left on your list, I'm like, okay, I think I think most people are gonna look at MT's list and be like, yeah, we like MT's list. You think people are gonna, gonna like my at, list? My list, they're gonna look at Jess list and be like, what the hell were they thinking with that? They're not thing? gonna listen and, uh, to me as soon as I put their 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 god Spider Man. <laughs> like, my no, a lot four. of people did not like Eternals, so like I, I, I'm very, I'd be shocked, yeah. I'm surprised if people like. I will list. say, and I said this earlier, my three and four are interchangeable, and I'll explain why when we get to it. Well, um, okay, we're gonna get to our top three picks in a moment. Uh, first, we want to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this episode. When it comes to our rankings in the bedroom, we all want to be number one. Thankfully, our sponsor today is here to help. Blue Chew. It's a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready for whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive a prescription within days. It's all done online, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Chew tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. So if you could benefit from some extra confidence when it's time to perform, Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our fans. Try Chew free when you use our promo code MARVEL at checkout. Just pay the $5 in shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code MARVEL to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. We thank BlueChew for sponsoring this podcast. All right, we are now at our number threes. Uh, things have already gotten a bit controversial, but yes. it's just going to get more fiery. Let's list our number three picks. What do you guys got? My number three is Multiverse of Madness. Okay. My number three is Multiverse of Madness. Uh, I got uh, Shang-Chi as number three for me. My number three Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Ah! Wow. I, I knew, I'm sorry. Don't leave. I knew don't you leave. were gonna put In front I of two knew you were gonna put people, two, Eric. Yeah, I knew you were gonna you? put the thing is, I knew it. I once he was like, I can't talk about ashiness. I knew he was gonna put it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that has nothing to do with it. That has nothing to do with it. I no, okay, you're fine. Uh, you're fine. You're explain. Fine. That's <laughs> pretty controversial. No, That's I'm more wrong. controversial it than is mine. Controversial. It absolutely is more controversial than yours. And I, I just, I want to say right now, I, I really, really <laughs> love the movie of Black Panther: White Kind of Forever. And I go back and forth. To me, it could go, I go back and forth with the number two, and number one, because both my number two and, uh, and my number three. Are, are I believe flawed movies and their flaws are similar. Uh, I don't want to say what my number two is yet though. Um, I think that I, I really give all the credit in the world 
for Ryan Coogler and the team taking an impossible scenario and somehow sticking a landing. There's a very meaningful story in here with uh, not only saying goodbye to Chadwick Boseman, but uh, grieving any lost one. I think it's the prettiest phase four film to look at and to listen to. Angela Bassett better win the Oscar for this movie. Tenoch Huerta, one of the all-time best antagonists. So why didn't I rank it higher? Uh, why do I think Multiverse of Madness and No Way Home are above it? I think um, a lot of people give their qual they qualify their reviews with uh, statements like, "Well, it had to do so much. Well, it was really hard for Ryan Coogler." I gotta stop you right there. No, this movie did not have to uh, do as much as it did. It did not have to include Val, did not have to include Ross, did not have to set up Thunderbolts. This movie did not, and it's controversial, it did not have to set up Riri Williams. I think Dominique Thorne is incredible in this movie, but we are gonna meet her in Ironheart anyway. We didn't have to use this movie to introduce her. We didn't have to have this whole Midnight Angel subplot. I don't think the Midnight Angels were as good as they could have been in this movie. I, I think this movie itself did not have to exist at all. Ryan Coogler and Marvel Studios chose to go forth to make it for the same reason every big movie gets made because they want to make money. They want to sell Happy Meals. And I think a lot of critics are giving this movie a free pass right now because they believe it was mostly respectful to Chadwick Boseman, which it was. It did a really good job. And I'm not going to, I'm not saying that was really easy. I think it definitely deserves bonus points for that, but I don't believe that, I believe it deserves a carte blanche. And I think in a, in a couple months from now, a lot of us are going to start, uh, are going to start looking at this movie a bit more critically. To uh, Ryan <laughs> Coogler's genius, I, I think he pulled off a commercial hit and he gave us something spiritually wholesome, and that was really, really hard to do. I think the story of Shuri's grief was flawless. I just think it just that story gets derailed by a couple of things that have nothing to do with it thematically. I think there's a couple self-inflicted wounds. But overall, for me, for Black Panther, we're kind of forever to be number one. It would have to be as good as or better than the 2018 film, and I don't think it's as good as the 2018 film. Ooh. Uh, and I think there are flaws with the multiverse of madness and no way home. I just think uh, those flaws don't pull away from those movies as much as the flaws of Black Panther were kind of forever pull away from the story of Shuri and her grief. I know I'm wrong though. That's just how I'm feeling. Like there is no right or wrong. You're just expressing your, your thoughts and your opinions. And like, I, thank you for sharing that. That was really, really great. Thank I you. Mean I could have been forgiving because the world's gonna. gonna <laughs> <laughs> just this Damn, I that oof, woo, woo. I don't know if it's because I'm black. It hit me somewhere, but I was like, God damn. Okay, well, my number third, <laughs> my number three is Multiverse of Madness because, and I think my number three and number four are interchangeable. Multiverse of Madness, I love completely out of Wanda. Um, I love Wanda. I have her tattooed on my body. I love her. Any kind of arc they can give her, great. Why it's not in my top two is because I'm also tired of the trip of making Wanda a crazy person. Uh, <laughs> I'm tired. I, I, I mean, I get it. I completely get it. Losing your you kids like the that wrong don't character, exist. my friend. <laughs> if you don't. House of M was a pretty crazy time. <laughs> it was so, I love her. But like my problem, and this is also, yeah, maybe a lot of people don't want to fight or freaking hear this. But it's more so the fact of like, yeah, Marvel does women kind of dirty. If they're not dead, they're crazy. Mm -hmm. um, if they're not crazy or dead, they're the damsel in distress being chased around. They never get like to be their own version of a hero. They don't get to be like, I'm strong and I don't need anyone's help. It's always like, we have to give them those three. We have to fridge them, as they say in She-Hulk. So, but I love Sam freaking Raimi. And that's where it got me because I'm a horror fan. I think they did a good job of making it scary for kids and scary for adults. I love the way they did go into the multiverse. Uh, was acting all there? Two out of the four. Um, and I did like that they did the Illuminati. You make some good points about it, but like with MT, I'm going to address all the criticism of the Multiverse of Madness. I'm going to have to because I ranked it in my top two, <laughs> so I have to. MT, you want to explain your pick of Shang-Chi at number three? I just thought that like that movie was just like the most action-packed um, and like the, the action choreography of that movie was so freaking amazing. And I, I just really think that Marvel movies should step their game up. Like, I think Shang-Chi set the bar. And like, obviously, like, you know, it's a different type of movie. Like, it's, you know, Shang-Chi is a very martial arts centric character. But like, man, like, if you're telling me that like action sequences could be that dope, like all the time, like, I haven't felt like that odd at the at action sequence since the Winter Soldier. Like Winter Soldier like really went mm -hmm. ham. And like I really like, you know, your your fighting heroes like that. And Shang-Chi really stepped it up. And I, I'm really looking forward to a Shang-Chi mm -hmm. sequel. Um, and I really like the, what they're doing, like telling the story about, you know, Shang-Chi's family and like him getting over his his own guilt and like his own shame with his father. And like Wen Wu is like one of the best mm -hmm. Marvel villains that we have ever gotten. Mm -hmm. Um and like the one I think one of the best in phase four, if if not the best, if I'm trying to think. Um, but no, oh, shh, never mind. Doc Ock, that dude was too good. Uh, but like uh, Wenwu uh, was so good, and like he was such a compelling character. 
and I cannot wait to see him in What If, kick some butt. Him versus Odin, come on. Are you kidding me? I need to see that in my system. Uh, but yes, um, great movie. I agree with these. And I mean, hearing the two of you explain why you rank these other movies higher, like I... I, I can't argue with it. It's hard. That's why I think like next week I'm going to be kicking myself in the butt for ranking Shang-Chi and Black Panther not higher on my list because I think there, there really is beautiful stories in those, especially Wakanda Forever. I, I think like the story, the Shuri story in Wakanda Forever, I think is better than the central stories of my top two. And I think it's because of all the other stuff in Wakanda Forever that just makes me uh, rank it as number. It's still in my top three, I guess. Um, anyway. But that's me qualifying. I'm making excuses, which is much <laughs> bullshit. My number two was Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. My number one was Spider-Man No Way Home. Okay. How about you guys? <laughs> Spider-Man was my number four. <laughs> yeah. number one. It's no surprise for me that, of course, the two POC films are my top two. <laughs> Wakanda Forever is my number one, and Shang-Chi is my number mm. two. If Wakanda right. Forever never came out, Shang-Chi would have been my number one. My number two was Wakanda Forever, and my number one was Spider-Man No Way Home. All right. Yeah. I it's... put it as my number four. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, I, I look at your list, I MT, and like I think four. yours is going to be the number one agreed upon list. Wow. Like I, I think fans, this is their list. Like I'm even looking at my list right now. I'm like, this is just me being indulgent with my own interests. Like, you have a very universally uh, applaudable list. I think MT wins for well, having no, the, the, no the winning. Most... It's just I yeah. don't know. I just thought, okay. I, I guess there's no winning. I think he has the worst list. He put Black Widow as number six. <laughs> he put Black Widow as number six. <laughs> Jess is like yeah. not happy. I'm not here for I, it. I'm sorry. Um, I think the rest is fine, but number okay. six is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to explain why uh, Multiverse of Madness is my number two. Okay, so I'm going to come in by saying that Sam Raimi, in my opinion, can really do no wrong. I love everything Sam Raimi makes. The fact that Kevin Feige let Sam Raimi make a true Sam Raimi film, I was just overjoyed. It's weird, it's violent, it's campy, it's scary. I understand it's not for everyone, though. Um, I just think that Multiverse of Madness, at the end of the day, when you ask me right now, I think it is only slightly better than Wakanda Forever. But I agree, the central storyline of Wakanda Forever of Shuri is better than the central storyline of Multiverse of Madness. But I think there there is a good central storyline of Multiverse of Madness. It's a story about the dangers of dreamwalking, the dangers of focusing too much on what might be, what could be, instead of what is. And that is a sickness that infects both Strange and Wada and America Chavez. And I love that the, I love the dark places this movie goes to with those characters that we see them dragged to the worst of themselves as they keep stra scratching that itch. And I, I, you know, I think what you said about Wanda, yeah, I think if you watch a post credit scene of WandaVision, you, you have no problems with where Wanda goes in this movie. I, I think it's it's not as clean as it could have been. I think the the biggest flaw with the movie is that they should have had the villainous Wanda this movie be a Wanda from another universe. It shouldn't have been the same exact Wanda from WandaVision. I think if they had just made that Wanda from a different universe searching for her kids, this would have been a perfect film. Um, maybe not perfect, because I think America Chavez as the damsel in the story is not that fun to watch, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I think just the little... The little details in this movie carry it for me. I love the the definitions of things like dreamwalking and incursions. The fact that it numbers uh, the multiverse universes. I love the line, I love you in every universe. I think that's beautiful. I think Elizabeth Olsen, completely savage in this movie. Not just in the loud moments, but in the quiet moments. The, how understated she is. I, I love the boldness of uh, introducing these fan casts, Illuminati, and then just slaughtering them. Uh, because yeah, it's a multiverse. We don't need a permanent Illuminati. Um, now, as a multiverse, mo uh, multiverse movie, I agree with you, MT. It's not as good as Everything Everywhere All at Once. It's not as good as many episodes of Rick and Morty. But hey, I like that each act explores a different universe and explores it. I, rather than exploring like uh, a dozen universes, but just like one scene of them, I love that we have several scenes in each of these universes. We really explore 838. We get to see the 838 Infinity War. Mm. That is insane to me. Seeing dead Thanos was incredible. Uh, I love this post inclusion universe. I think the music fight, the Danny Elfman can see music cool. fight. I love that fight. Super imaginative. The moment he resurrects Zombie Strange and then the music kicks in and Zombie Strange takes him up. Like, I lost my mind. I think it has the best economy of story. Maybe second to No Way Home. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I think when it comes, if we're comparing damsels who get scapegoated, I think Riri Williams is a far more interesting hero and and will kind of forever. I completely agree. I just think structurally that's a flaw for both movies. As a Sam Raimi fan, uh, I just can't help right now than love it more than than what kind of forever, which I think was just a little more uneven. I think at least Multiverse of Madness was a was an even Sam Raimi movie throughout. Um, 
When it comes to uh, No Way Home, I mean, what can we say about this film that isn't amazing? And I think ultimately uh, a, a lot of the critics in No Way Home believe like, well, how could this not be a great movie? You're just cashing in on, on nostalgia points. I think this movie deserves more credit for how well John Watts made us care with a grounded narrative of an anxious teen desperately going after what he wants. And what does he want? He wants to help his friends get into college by becoming a nobody, which what a noble goal to want anonymity. Uh, trying to have it all. He does all the right stuff, but he gets punished for it. He pays the biggest prices for it. He goes to dark places. He breaks our hearts with a tragic sacrifice in the final act. My favorite parts of this movie were in the coffee shops. You know, the just the teen drama of opening your college acceptance letters at the same time. Uh, we get introduced to a uh, freaking daredevil in this movie. What a win. Uh, and you know, this Toby and Andrew Garfield shit didn't have to work. This could have been hard. Toby Maguire, not a good guy in real life, but we love him in this movie. Like the fact that they're able to like fix things that we didn't like about the Toby era and the Andrew Garfield era and like make those retroactively look like brilliant things that were inevitable uh, uh, with their destination points in this movie. I think this was, movie was better than Endgame. I think this movie is definitely mm. better than Endgame. Willem Dafoe, I think gives the best performance of the phase. No shame on Angela Bassett. She definitely deserves an Oscar, but like Willem Dafoe I think was incredible in this movie. So um, and, uh, and this was not a guaranteed win. I think this is a very difficult win to pull off and the fact that they did was great. Jess, I hear your complaints though. I think Jamie Foxx's lecture was really underdeveloped, didn't need to be in the movie. I think the movie probably spends a bit too long in the opening act dealing with Peter's legal troubles, but you know, hey, at least it clips along real fast and the jokes are great. I, to me, this is a top five MCU movie and I don't think the other movies on our list are top five MCU overall. That's so funny. I would never put that movie above Endgame, but <laughs> that's <laughs> 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 I'm genuinely like, oh, Tobey Maguire again. I guess I just was Spider-Man. I want something new. That is like all I want. And maybe that's mm. just my quarrel is like with why Spider-Man and Multiverse of Madness are my four and three. We'll just go to mine. Asian Americans have the hardest time getting anything and especially 100%. roles. Yeah. And we have a movie yeah. that put them in Jordans on the back of a dragon to like, and the choreography, everything, the family relationship, the fact that we all called the Mandarin the Mandarin for years. And it wasn't until yeah. this movie where we addressed that it was offensive is like remarkable mm -hmm. to me. The fact that a movie actually, like we can watch other things and be like, yeah, this is offensive. Yeah, it's bad, it's bad. But we, even watching Iron Man, still referred to him as the Mandarin and that movie is not old. So I'm just like, the fact mm -hmm. that they were able to address that to make you be proud of who you are and who, like your name and don't let anyone change it is remarkable to me. And the fact like I've been begging for stuff like this for three whole phases. <laughs> And then they finally give us diversity in the fourth phase. We reached so many different, like, we broke so many walls, like ceilings. Like, we did so much in phase four that we never did in the other phases. And those weren't old. Those weren't long ago. I don't know why we didn't reach it earlier. And right. even, like, acknowledging that, we only still have Shang-Chi. Like, we don't have Cindy Moon. We don't have anyone else. So I'm like, I... Are we like uh, we have some Eternals? We have Gemma Chan. That's great, but I'm like I want more, and I want more diversity. And Shang Chi is a beautiful film, and I think they did a great job at family dynamic. And I, if they came out with a second one right now, I would be in that theater. I saw Shang Chi three times in theaters. I was so happy to see it, and I want more. And that's coming from a little a little black girl from Olympia, Washington, but. No, there's no there, there's no question about the hard work Ryan Coogler had to change things, flip flop it, take it, throw it and slam dunk it for Wakanda forever. The fact that like so many hiccups came in their way and he was still able to create something so heavy and so beautiful that I couldn't get up out of my seat at the end of the movie. And I have not <laughs> felt that way about any movie in phase four. There was not a single movie mm. that ended and I sat in my seat and someone said, Jessica, the movie's over. You have to go. <laughs> but Wakanda forever did, and I, I love it. I, I, I mean, I'm rooting for everybody black. Uh, hey. I, I, I love, I love diversity, and it took until the phase four, and I will always stand on that soapbox of, I need it, and these two movies are new to me. Um, even if Black Panther had right. a first movie, it's still new to me. And it's not right. the same characters I've been seeing for the last three phases <laughs> or you know, since I was a child. You like literally right. Wakanda Forever like had so many powerful black women in it. Like we've never really seen a superhero movie with powerful black women like this before. 
Um, like we had Riri, we had um, Okoye, we had again the 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 home girl from the the other girl from the other Midnight Sister. But I keep forgetting her name. Michaela Cole. Uh, <laughs> Michaela Cole, the actress. Um, and we had Queen Ramonda with a, an incredible performance. And like it's just like it, it's about time, you know. And I, and I really want to see more. Like like you said, like Phase Four was huge for diversity. Like massive, like in, including the uh, the Disney Plus shows because we got Miss Marvel, we got um, She Hulk, we got like we just had so so much, especially for women. Like this phase was so great for women, and I'm so much. I'm looking forward to like that Secret Wars moment where we get another like like a, an A Force moment. Like we we sort of got teased in Endgame, oh. but like we got a legitimate oh, I can't, sequence. I, I want to see a wait. huge fight oh, of all the women God, that we got. That'd be so that. freaking dope. God, damn. Um, but anyways, gonna be so yeah, good. so good. Um, but I guess we should talk about my two now, I guess. Um, but yes, no, I guess going on Wakanda Forever, which was my number two. Um, so like that movie, like I just love anything Black Panther. Like before Black Panther even appeared in Civil War, I have been like the biggest Black Panther fan. Like I've been trying to, I was preaching to everybody like T'Challa's amazing. And like, and like it really broke my heart when Chadwick Boseman passed away. And I was ex- I really wondering how they're going to handle that. And like to actually put like the real world element of a sickness and add that to the story and like not shy away from what the reality of the situation was but do it with like such tact and like also just make it a part of like a, such a powerful story between two nations um and like also i really loved how they they put chadwick's um oh sorry well this you know chadwick is a great guy as well but like they put t'challa's um merciful nature in the forefront especially at the very end of the movie with um you know um shuri like basically saying what t'challa said to zemo it's like vengeance is ruining us all let's you know hold hands together and uh let's be friends even though you killed my mom which couldn't be me (laughs) could not be me i'm sorry uh shuri's a better person than i am because like not me. Yeah, if they, you know, me and they would be, we, 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 we scrap it. But yeah, no, I thought that was really cool. And like, it sort of honored T'Challa's legacy in the MCU in a very special way. And again, a bunch of awesome black women. Can't go wrong with that. Um, but Spider-Man No Way Home, I think was, it was tough for me to, to cause I was thinking about Wakanda Forever being my number one, but like Spider-Man No Way Home was just a really solid experience just in terms of um, just exploring the the spider-man like with great power um comes a great responsibility having that be the crux of the film and like and especially with the film being a very clear um uh metaphor on immigration and like you know it's it's essentially like a response to what was happening in the world at the time um when um it was being written and with um the 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 villains of no way home being immigrants to this universe and like they're like hey we should send them back no we shouldn't we should help them out and like i really loved how they made a spider-man movie like a like a spider-man movie like a huge movie have an actual meaning um to real life and um i i thought that they handled it spectacularly um and um seeing toby Maguire and andrew gar having andrew garfield get that like you are amazing moment was like super special to me and very oh, and like oh, having be having him catch MJ, those two moments were just like wow. Marvel Studios is the great redeemer because like they really know how to like sit, bring characters back that didn't really get their best shot. Um, with you know so like Sony's Amazing Spider-Man movies, not exactly the best. And Kevin Feige was like, all right, here's everyone. Everyone loves every Andrew Garfield again, and like everyone is gonna claim that they love the Amazing Spider-Man too, even though you're lying. You're lying. Even though I, I love the Amazing Spider-Man too, but like no one was pre loving that movie until No Way Home. Let's be real. Uh, people that love Emma Stone did. People it's that true. Love Emma Stone. Gwen Stacy died. Queen. Did. <laughs> she is Gwen Stacy. Um, but no, Spider-Man No Way Home was a really like a celebration of Spider-Man, and I I I think that um John Watts knocked it out of the park. He had like an impossible task. I do not envy that man um but he he pulled it off and he he gave us like a marvel experience that is like truly an end game level experience it's like holy shit no one really thought that this would ever happen we never thought that we'd see toby suit up again and we got it which is like in the mcu mcu canon so number one 
for me. I think both of you make a good a lot of good points, especially you, Jess. Uh, I mean, obviously we disagreed uh, on these things, but like, I don't want uh, anyone to feel like I'm taking anything away from Wakanda Forever or Shang Chi because both were very beautiful films, and like we needed these films way earlier. You know, right. we, I think fans needed these films, and these films had such a difficult task ultimately and the fa- they were both miracles in in certain ways the fact mm. that they were as good and as well liked as they were and were able to reach out and connect with people in ways that like my two t- top two films definitely didn't you know i'm i'm definitely grounded in like mcu world building and nerdery and and script structure that's and i probably care way more about script structure better. than average viewers do that's exactly. what makes our differences that's what makes better. better that's what exactly. makes the differences yeah, better absolutely. i would hate that if we all had absolutely. the same freaking opinion that'd right be that'd be boring it, it would be, yeah that'd it wouldn't be, be interesting that'd be so boring and also only that's one of us great. is wrong and it's mt choosing black widow as number six <laughs> I, I, I will never be over that i thought i i thought we were friends yo <laughs> this yo, we, yo, we, you see, oh. yo once i saw freaking heimdall's <laughs> son with this freaking buck team <laughs> show up in that really terrible axel freaking, his name is axel axel <laughs> once i saw that imagery i was like come on like taika i love you bro I I, you make amazing movies but this is believe. unacceptable <laughs> The thing is, the thing is, I, I just, I, and my thing about it is, you put it at six, which means there's something below it. And that's impossible. That's the impossible part for me. Wait, okay. Thor 4, <laughs> which is what I'm saying. Thor 4. Oh my like, God. I'm going to shake Very you. much disappointed. <laughs> anyway, sorry. It's fine. But these were all great times. These were not terrible. These are not electro level films. What I loved about hearing each of your lists is it told me, I, I, I think I already knew a lot about the two of you, but like, both of you opened my eyes with the way, with how you ranked your priorities and it made me love you even more in the way you look at these films. And it, and it told me more about like how, what you appreciate, why you appreciate it. And I want to thank both of you. I mean, today's a day of thankfulness. I'm thankful for the two of you for being able to like, uh, so clearly illustrate what you love about these films in ways that opened my eyes. So thank you. I'm thankful for you, Eric, too. Your list was great too. There's nothing wrong with your list at all. Everyone's list was great. Even your list at home, your list is the right list. That's, that's oh, yeah. the most Can't important. Can't wait to that's see right. all the, your the tweets at me right about one. what we were wrong with. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, let us know in the comments below what you loved about each of our lists, but only what you loved about each of our lists. I don't want right. to... This is Thanksgiving. Hey, hey, not today. This is a good holiday. Yes. Fight with your parents. <laughs> um, yeah, don't, don't fight, fight with, with me. Fight but with your parents. We'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it there for this episode of Inside Marvel. I think in future weeks, we need to talk about, uh, Wayne, the MCU uh, Disney Plus titles, uh, Phase 4, against the theatrical films mm. as a whole. Like, I, I kind of feel like there's an interesting conversation there. That'd be really but fun. Uh, either way, follow Jessica at Lulu underscore Clemens. Follow MT at Mastertainment. Follow me at EA Boss. Subscribe to Inside Marvel wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much for watching. Again, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, eat some pie. Enjoy your time. Gobble, and have gobble. a great weekend. Gobble, gobble, gobble. And as we always, love you, everyone. Bye-bye. Wakanda forever. Sponsored by Kamala Harris. <laughs>